Howdy and welcome. I'm Mike, your board gaming every dude, and today we are looking at everything Nemesis so that you can find out what you can and cannot get and which one is right for you. Should you get Nemesis? Should you get Lockdown? Should you get the expansions? We will look at all of them in order. We're going from Nemesis, I hope I get this right, Nemesis to then Void Seeders. Then we're going to look at Aftermath. We're going to look at Untold Stories somewhere in there, Volumes 1 and 2. We're going to look at Lockdown. We're going to look at Lockdown Stretch Goals. We're going to look at Untold Story 3. Let's get straight to it. Go to the chapter that you want to watch by all means. All right, so base game Nemesis. Is it for you or should you just go straight for Lockdown? Well, let's see what it is. This isn't an unboxing, so we're not going to look in depth at everything. Just a very fast overview. You can see the board here in the original Nemesis. You are moving around on an isolated spaceship very much replicating the original movie, Alien. As a matter of fact, it's so close, it's a little uncomfortable to how close it plays to Alien. And we'll talk into why I kind of like the expansions for sort of turning this into its own series instead of just a copycat kind of thing. But we've got room tiles, and they get flipped over randomly like this. Place them on the board. Every room, as you can see, let's go ahead and zoom above now. Every room you can see has its own special... Um, it's got its own title, and it actually has actions that you can use, like you can turn self-destruct on and off. This isn't a how-to, so we won't go into all that, but just so you can roughly see what it looks like. And you take, you've got a whole bunch of those tiles divided into types of one or two, with two being optional rooms. One, those rooms are always on the board no matter how you play. And the good thing about this is, of course, you have a random setup every time. Downside, the board is very dark, which is cool, but as you can see, if you have a light overhead, you can deal with some glare, or if you have a light to the side, actually, I get more trouble from the light to the side. But anyway, you've got your uh, one, two, three, four, I always think it's six, five, it is six, yeah, I thought it was six playable characters, and each character has their own ten deck of cards, uh, ten card deck that has its own abilities. Let's see, with these ridiculous glasses, if I can see them. There we go, yep. So we've got, for instance, here, the pilot. We've got the 10 action cards for the pilot, and there are some cards, such as Rest, that are going to be the same on every character, but then they will also have a good number of cards that are special just for them, like Old Friend for the pilot. And you've got a good variety of different types of characters. They don't have names, they just have the title of their occupation. So like this is the scientist, and we've got a We've got the soldier here, and obviously he's going to go for a more straight-on fight-the-aliens approach, and then you've got the scientist, of course, who is going to be a little more brainy with it. The mechanic can get around the ship, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, premise of the game, if you're here, you probably already know, you wake up on a spaceship, there's a dead body, so you walk around, boop, exploring, flipping over tiles as you explore, and finding out that there are these alien creatures trying to kill you, and so you end up being dealt a certain number of objectives, one or two objectives, you pick one of them, you have to meet that objective and survive. That's how you play the game. Game happens over 15 rounds, as you can see right down here, and you've got nice little markers that help you track that. Every round goes down, 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 until the ship blows up or goes somewhere. You've also got a self-destruct option down here, where you can turn on the self-destruct sequence and go down, 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 down. All kinds of fun. All right, those are your markers. You've got your six characters. You've got your scientist, your soldier. You've got your scout, who basically would be like the rogue if you play RPGs or anything like that. You've got your pilot right here. She's great at getting around the ship. If you need to explore a lot, use the pilot. You've got the mechanic, who can use mechanical corridors, these red things, in order to skip around. He can also start fires, which is very handy. And then we've got our captain. The captain is not super strong, for solo play as his abilities really work best with another character so if you play solo with the captain you may want to play controlling two different characters if you're playing cooperative not a problem i love the captain he's probably my favorite one but you do have to control two hands so to play this solo you can play this one-handed with just one character it might be a little more challenging or a little easier depending on what your objective is so what are these objectives well we've got the character cards here again 10 for each type of character we don't have to look at all of those, but we can look at objectives. There we go. So we have personal objectives, and if you're playing semi-co-op, then there are objectives that allow you to either play friendly with other players or actually work against them. We're not going to go into those, as I don't have a lot of experience with that, and this is board games for one, so, you know, solo and co-op play. So looking at these different solo co-op objectives, there they are, right there got our solo co-op objectives and you can see there's one two three four five six seven different ones you randomly pick one for each game you pick one for every character you're controlling if you're playing solo controlling more than one character that means you take out two objectives 
both of them have to be completed. If you're playing cooperatively with others, same exact idea. So those are your objectives that you need to meet. It might mean blowing up the nest, or it might just mean set the destination for Earth because you have destinations put right here with these fun little cards. Let's see, we got all our item cards. Let's go to our objectives. There they are. So coordinates are randomly going to get placed here, and you'll only have one. And it's going to tell you if your little marker is, say, on B, where it starts, the ship is currently going to Mars. So you're going to have to come all the way to the cockpit, find out where it's going, and then you have to use another turn to change the coordinates to wherever you need to go. Deep Space, Venus, Earth, or Mars. These are randomly chosen each time, so you never know where the ship's going to be going. Those are your coordinates. While we're here, we can also look. We've got all kinds of different items. Items that you can craft, things like flamethrowers. And then you also have your healing items deck with things that can cure you when you get damaged. You've got your tools items that can help with repairs and just utility building stuff that you really need. You also have your final, the red items, and that is your weapons item deck that has all kinds of things like ammo, different weapons that you can use, all the good stuff. And you are able to collect these items by traveling around and using a search action, that's one of your cards, in order to get the item out of that room. So the emergency room, see, is green. So I could go in here, do a search action, and hopefully get a nice healing item to help me survive. Let's take a look at these other cards that I pulled out here, once those all get stuffed in there, nice and tight. There we go. Awesome. These, we've just got some nice art that does come with the base game. It's got some art for characters that you'll only see in Aftermath, which is interesting. So you buy the base game, and it has art for Aftermath characters, as well as the base characters. It makes you kind of curious about them. And then, of course, you have your player aids that tell you what to do each round. They are very handy. Always have one in front of you. And then, of course, your character cards. Scout, soldier, scientist, captain, mechanic, pilot, nothing on the other side. When you're playing solo, it doesn't really matter whether you have that out or not. Um, also, for solo play, the intruder player action is not used. This is to help address the issue of player elimination. So in Nemesis, if your character dies, you're out of the game. There's nothing you can do. If you would like, now for solo, this is totally silly. You would never play against yourself. If you're playing cooperative and say somebody dies and they want to control the intruders and be really mean and get revenge, then they can, once they're eliminated, take this deck and they actually begin controlling the intruders as opposed to the AI system that the game comes with. It makes it very hard. It's kind of mean. There's going to be some hurt feelings. I didn't like it, but it is cool that it's in there for the right people and the right group. It's a really good option to have. I personally don't like it. I'll never use it unless I'm playing with somebody with a really, really good sense of humor and I have a really good sense of humor because it gets brutal and it, it gets mean. All right, going over here. I can't see a thing. There we go. We've also got every character comes with their own starting items in the base game. You've got your mechanic there. You can see he starts with the flashlight, special abilities, a plasma torch. Every character is different. Soldier has more weaponry. Scientist is going to have something more sciencey. The captain's going to have some communication stuff that's going to help everybody work together. So pretty cool. You can have a different experience with each character that you choose to play or each combination of characters. As far as what you have on the board, everybody would start here in the hibernatorium. If we're playing solo, realistically, let's say normally it would be two or three, but um, you can play with just one. So, you know, let's play with just one. So let's say you have your one character here. Every time they move, they make noise. You've got some nice dice here. So you move, you roll for noise. It was silent, but this will tell you different corridors to put it in. This is not a how-to guide. I won't tell you how, but you can see what the components are. When you make noise, there you go. If you get noise in every corridor surrounding the area, then bam, you have an encounter. An intruder might pop up. So you've got those nice little noise markers. You've got a nice little card stand here that you can slide your item cards. These are not the item cards, but I don't care. It gets the point across. You can put your cards in there. It's fantastic. There you go. And you've got your dice. You've got your silence dice and you've got your damage dice. So when you're rolling for noise, that means you move. Every time you move, you roll for noise. It tells you what corridor to put the marker in. When you attack an intruder, you roll the damage die and see, oh, I missed. Or Boom, I got one damage. So you apply one damage to the intruder, see whether or not they're still around. That's what your dice are for. You've also got your fire and malfunction tokens. Sometimes you'll go in a room, boom, there's the nest, that's great. And it catches on fire. Different events determine this. Sometimes you can intentionally do it. The room's on fire. If you get enough rooms on fire, the game ends because the ship burns. Same thing with the malfunction token. Sometimes you go in a room and it's broken. The game tells you it's broken. You can't use the room unless you repair it. 
if enough of these malfunction tokens are out on the board, the ship breaks, game over. So you can see those are nice, and these all get carried over into the expansions as well, so we won't need to repeat any of this. Then you've got your poker chip-like things, I guess cardboard, they're not actually poker chips, but you know, they're chips, whatever. And these are the intruder chips. You've got adult intruders based on the symbols, and you've got all kinds of different intruders. You've got the creepers, which are a little smaller, and you can see the more intricate they are, the worse they are. So that's the larva, the smallest. You've got your breeder, they're no fun, they're pretty bad. Somewhere in there we've got a queen as well. These all go into, well not all of them, the game tells you how many. A certain number of them get put into the bag, and every single round, at the end of the round, you draw one, and based on what you draw, something terrible happens. That's how this game goes. So you just follow the instructions for applying that terrible thing. This also tells you what intruder comes onto the board. So if you have an encounter, no noise in all corridors, pull out your token, it tells you, oh, we got an adult. So you put an adult intruder in the room, and joy and fun and wonderful things ensue, right? No, not at all. Anyway, here's a nice little bag to hold them. Never has a problem with that. Let's put this back here. You've got your little status markers, and these can be used to track statuses of of course, your rounds. They're also used on your player boards. Every character has their own player board. We're playing the soldier, fantastic. Our status markers, I'll put this in the middle, can tell us if my character has slime, which is bad, or if they've launched the signal to get help. That's good. That's what you use your status markers for. Not much else, pretty simple. On your player board, you can see you also are told what you can craft. It's the same for every character. Basic actions and your careful movement action, it's the same for every character. There really isn't anything unique about your board other than the artwork. So you don't have to worry about that. And you've got your little damage markers. So sometimes you take damage. Sometimes, yeah, right, all the time. Um, as you die, a lot. You will die. So if you get a light wound, you've got a nice little marker, put it there. You get another light wound, slide it down. You get another light wound, and you have to draw a serious wound card. That's how you use your player board. These are your damage markers. And these are also used as your ammo. So if you have some kind of a weapon that allows you to have four ammo, you take out four, boom, you have four ammo. Every time that you decide to shoot and roll your fun little damage die, you discard one or two, whatever the weapon tells you, roll, hopefully you hit. These are also used in the base game to determine the damage of an intruder. And this is a big negative of this game, though it looks cool. Let's say you're fighting this. I rolled, I got one damage. You take one damage marker and you put it on the intruder to track their damage. Well, when this gets to four, five, and six, you're stacking like this, and then you move them, and sometimes they fall off, sometimes they don't. It looks cool, but it's a bit of a nuisance. They do fix this in lockdown, just to give you a heads up there. For this game, just kind of deal with it. Again, it looks cool, but a bit of a nuisance. All right. What else do we have to look at here? We only have our little tokens here we're not going to worry about. These are like corpses and things like that. So if a character dies, then boom, he's out of the game. You put the character corpse in there. If an intruder dies, take him out. Boom, there's a part of the intruder. You can use these to do research, gain special abilities, find intruder weaknesses, and such. That's basically what's in there. There's a couple other special tokens for special situations like alerts and uh, some things with airlock controls and all that. We don't need to go into it. For this so boom there you go all right talking about that though the intruder board the intruders have a, their own board as they do in every one of the expansions so you'll get used to this it tells you what the icons mean so a larva icon a creeper an adult breeder and queen they also come with three different weaknesses which are some small cards in here i don't really feel like digging them out but anyway three small cards go here and as you do research and learn more you flip it over find a weakness it makes you stronger makes them a little bit weaker it also lets you know how many eggs are in the nest we've got eggs somewhere over here probably in there you just stack them in there they're just cardboard tokens no need to dig oh my goodness all right and then of course we've got our doors as you're running around randomly at times doors will shut you can open the doors you can destroy the doors by laying them down never to be repaired again game comes with plenty of them now let's take a look at our discovery tokens. These are in all of the expansions. Again, like we won't have to repeat these, just gives an idea. Every unexplored room, sometimes every explored room, you never know, depends on what you're playing, gets an exploration token like so. When you move into that room, boom, you knock over the intruder, boom. Flip over the exploration token, it tells you to do something based on the symbol. You do that something and then you flip this over and find out what it is. It's usually a something very bad. Sometimes it's not that bad. It just depends on what you are playing. When you get to lockdown, there are actually some good exploration tokens if you're on the surface of Mars. That's a different story. Then over here, we've got our life pods. So we've got life pods that we can escape on. When you're playing solo, you'll only be using two. 
Uh, if you're using one or two characters, the more characters you use, the more life pods that go on the board. They start out locked, you can flip them over once they get unlocked and hopefully get in there and fly away to safety. You've also got engines, and these are unique to the base game, as they are not, well, you're in the spaceship, they have engines. So the other games, uh, Lockdown doesn't use the engine. But anyway, you have a working engine and a broken engine, and you shuffle them up randomly, place them here so that you don't know are the engines working or not. If you manage to meet a goal and set the destination for Earth, you finish the game, you escape, and you flip over the engines, and two out of three are broken, it blows up. You need two out of three working in order to succeed in the game. So there are three different engines for that, and you've got your first player token, which again, when you're playing solo, you don't really need, unless you're controlling more than one character. I use the first player token to let me know, like, okay, I'm controlling the soldier, and then I move it over to the next player board, so on, so on, so on, right? So all that really leaves then is this deck of cards here. Let's see if I can pull you out without going crazy. There we go. Fantastic. You've got a few different decks. You've got your Contamination deck right here, which you'll be familiar with because Contamination is used in all of the Nemesis games. So it's this right here with a special code. Sometimes you have to take a Contamination card. This game comes with a decoder. This and Lockdown come with decoders. The other expansions do not. Slide this in the decoder, it's going to tell you whether or not you are infected. If you're infected, very bad things happen. If you're not infected, bad things might still happen. Hopefully not as bad. You want to gather as few of these as possible, but there you go. Contamination deck. The intruders are going to attack you because that's how life goes. It's beautiful and wonderful. So, we take a look at our intruder attack deck. Flip one over. When told, the game tells you. It tells you what the attack is and how awful your life is going to be next. You've also got your serious wounds, unique to this game, this base game. And it tells you some terrible thing that happens to you. And then, going along with this theme of terrible things happening to you, you have your event deck unique to this base game, and you flip it over and find out what terrible things are happening on the ship to make your life even harder. Those are your decks. You can see there's plenty there, so you're going to have a different play every single time. That is a bonus of this game. A negative, as you can probably guess, is setup. There is some setup time, and it's a table hog, which I don't know if that's a negative, Sometimes that's great. I love the presence, but it's just something good to know, of course. And then, of course, you've got your miniatures, which most people love. I'm not that into miniatures. I do like the character miniatures a lot. The intruder miniatures are, they're very nice. Um, a little, you know, I like the, I tend to like the adult intruders, but then you've got the breeders. The bigger they are, the worse they are. And of course, the queen. Magnificent craftsmanship. It's not necessarily my style. That's all I'm saying. But for the style they are, they are just, they are sturdy, they are strong, they are detailed, they are, you know, works of art. Just not my kind of art. There we go. And there's more than one type of adult intruder, too. They've got like two or three models. The adult intruders and teeny little larvae, which are a lot worse than you might think. Stay away from them. All right, so final thoughts on Nemesis, the base game. Nemesis is over $100. So know that up front and a lot of that, there's a lot here. You're getting plenty. You are getting pretty much infinite replayability, um, but you're also play paying for miniatures. So if you're not a miniature person, that could kind of be a downside. I would be fine with standees personally, um, and they are huge. So you can see it's kind of hard for them to fit on the blocks, but up against the person, it does also set the mood. So that's just a preference thing. But as far as replayability, I could have this on a table all the time and I would be happy. I really enjoy replaying this game. This base game does not come with the campaign. It doesn't come with the story mode. You create the story as you play. It's a cinematic experience, as you may have heard from pretty much any review, people saying this is not a game. This is an, what, an event, a film, a narrative, something like that. Um, I don't totally agree, because you can actually mitigate using strategy. For example, you want a pro tip, always have a fire extinguisher before you finish the game. When you get to that final room, if you have a fire extinguisher, you will know why and it can save you almost every time, not every time, almost every time. But yeah, use that fire extinguisher. There is, this is not just a game of luck, though sometimes you will draw so bad, there's no way you're gonna succeed, and it's an amazing story. By all means, go down in flames and enjoy it. But um, it is a game, there is a strategy. Getting to know every character, their strengths and their weaknesses, and which uh, mission objectives are gonna go best with which character, there's something to it, and I really appreciate that, I like that. And I've even grown to enjoy playing it solo, controlling just one character. So, final thoughts. If you only get one of the Nemesis games, you can get the base game and be totally happy if this survival narrative film experience is for you. 
let's take a look at untold stories. And right before we do untold stories, something important as well, a common complaint you'll see about Nemesis is that you have, there are so many rules that you have to consult the rule book frequently. It does come with a nice room sheet that really helps you out, but that is true. Especially your first few plays, you're going to be consulting the rule book. Even now, as I know the game very well, I still do consult the rule book from time to time for specific things because there are so many different variables. For me, that doesn't detract from the game because it's more like referencing an appendix that I know the answer is there and I know where to find it. And most of the time, you don't need to do that. As a matter of fact, once you know the game, you can just choose not to and go by what you think is the most reasonable in the moment. But that's important to know um, if you really, re if you're like heavy into very strategic euros with uh, where you are in control of everything, this is so totally not going to be for you at all as this throws everything spiraling out of control and you do have to rely on some strategy and some fun in order to get out of it alive. But do know that about the rules, you will be referencing them, especially your first few plays. All right, so Untold Stories, this is not available at retail. Um, now, Untold Stories 3, I don't know, but we're just looking at the Untold Stories that are made for it, Nemesis. There's Untold Stories 1 and 2 that were made for the base game. These were Kickstarter only items. So only if you backed the Kickstarter did you get these. So you can only get these secondhand right now. What they are is they, they create a campaign mode by means of a graphic novel that tells the whole story of how your crew found the nemesis, what happened when they got onto it, and it takes you through actually playing through, I believe, four scenarios. I'll have to check this. It's four or five scenarios and it's branching meaning you could play through again and it might go a different direction not too completely different but it's like a bit like a choose your own adventure and you're probably going to choose death like the first several times until you figure out the right route to take but it comes with its own instructions and its own components i'm not going to unbag them all there's nothing super special to see just some um i'll just hold it all in front of this camera just some numbers that end up getting laid out and these are four events so you'll be told put event number one on the engine room. So when you get there, you know it's event number one. So you turn to event number one in the comic and it tells you something that happens. You read event one and you follow the instructions or follow the story. That's what those are. And then you got a few different tokens here. Close that so I don't spoil too much. You've got um, tokens that let you know what to do when you enter a room. So some events activate when you enter the room. There's a token you place for that. Some events activate when you use the uh, ability in the room. There's a token for that. And some are, there's a book. Yeah, there's a book token in here. We'll just toss it to the side. That lets you know when you get to a certain point in the story, then this event happens. Again, this tells you what to do and when. And I can't walk you through it because that would spoil it. You also have these lovelinesses. These are Marines. This little token here. These are Marines that may or may not, I'm not going to tell you anything, appear and decide for yourself whether they help you or not, given the nature of how terrible things happen in this game. And then depending on choices you make, you'll earn different lettered tokens. So you might take choice C and the game will tell you, take choice C and put it in a pool. And that may mean something later on, depending on which choices are in your choice pool. Let me make sure this is still green and running. Yes, it is. That's amazing. All right. You've also got cables. And these cables, at some point, you may or may not be using for any reason that I'm not going to spoil to do a special something. But anyway, you can take a look at the artwork. Don't read anything. Don't read anything. Just kind of take a look, take a gander, enjoy the beautiful artwork. Something to know about this, if you do choose to get it secondhand, um, it is obviously not totally finished, like proofread or anything. So there are some typos where it'll tell you to go to the wrong page. Using your deductive abilities, you can go to the right page. Like for example, one says, go to page XXX. I assume that means 30. It, and if you go to page 30, you're right, I think. That's where you're supposed to go. The only reason that's odd is that's the only time Roman numerals are used in here that I'm aware of. So that kind of threw me off. And another one told me to go to page, like, 38. And if you go to page 38, it makes no sense. It's definitely not 38. But based on the context, I figured out the page to go to. Um, so, yeah, I don't love that. But it's a Kickstarter-only item, and I guess that kind of shows. But the art is so beautiful. The narrative is wonderful. I haven't beat it. I've gotten all the way through, like, to the end, but I, you know, wasn't successful. But I do want to play it again. So, yeah, if you need a story, go for it. And the other, what was the other error in here? 
there was an error. There's something where if you complete campaign one and two, and then you get to like campaign three, and let's say you die, instead of making you restart, there is something interesting that they do that makes it so you can restart within within the story canon as well, that you can restart at the previous mission. But the way they word it, if you follow the instructions exactly, at least from what I found, you'd get stuck in a loop. So I didn't follow the instructions exactly because I figured that was some kind of typo error so that I didn't get stuck in a loop. So basically there are some errors in there. If you buy it secondhand, just be aware of that. Um, but I enjoyed the story. Untold Stories number two is for the semi-co-op. So I should emphasize this is for uh, co-op which you can play as one player, but you really do need to control two characters or more in order to do this one. So it's not truly solo, it would be a two-handed solo or co-op game. Untold Stories number two is semi-co-op only. So there is no solo mode or co-op mode from this, so obviously I have not played it. But here's what's good to know. You're not missing out as far as the story. This isn't a, this isn't like Untold Stories one, where it is a story from page one all the way to the ending, and you just wanna get there to see how it ends and then connects to the next game of Lockdown. This is different. These are just standalone, unique scenarios for when you play semi-co-op. If you are playing semi-co-op and you want like a campaign of one episode to go through, then there are a whole lot of them in here for you to randomly play through. And you can see they come with their own beautiful artwork and they come with their own, uh, they use the same tokens as well, as well as some special cards. There is a deck of like 10 cards or so that are used only for this and I don't feel like digging to pull them out because who knows which box I put them in. But yep, that's it. If you want to do Untold Stories number two, you got to play semi-co-op, no other option. And then of course there is, I think it's, um, I don't know how much those are since those would be secondhand. This here is the dice rolling mat or whatever you call it, a dice tray. I think it's like $15. It's neoprene. It's for the base game of Nemesis. It's clipped like this. And I actually really enjoyed the dice roll really nice in there. This is a fan item, you know, I mean, $15 is, um, you know, quite a bit. And you're not going to use this for any other game. So use this if you are a fan. It's good fun. I like it. Rolls very well. I always pull it out if I'm playing with it. Okay, let's go to Void Seeders. All righty. Void Seeders is available retail. I got mine retail. And it runs $60, $70. I think it's a little over $70. It could be more now. That's about what I paid for, something like $67, $68. Um, expect around $70. All right. But it is an expansion that introduces a new type of alien to your game. So you need to have Nemesis. That's already $100 right there. And the only reason I'm mentioning the price is I just want you to know what you can get so you can know what's right for you. So base game Nemesis, got to have it. You use all of the components from the base game. You all of the same characters from the base game. You just add in these intruders, the void seeders, instead of the intruders. And what I really like is that this sort of makes the Nemesis series its own, where the intruders are basically alien to a T. I mean, there's no variance that I'm aware of hardly at all, other than the artwork, which is still incredibly similar. With Void Seeders, it goes into its whole, its own world. I really appreciated it. So it comes with its own, what do you call those, miniatures. The Void Seeders have their own board that replaces the intruder board. And that means that they also have their own weakness cards. So you have Void Seeder weaknesses. You have, we'll go to the overhead. One, two, three. You'll have your three that you'll find out and be able to flip over with research to defeat them easier. So you've got that there. And you've also got your own Void Seeder event deck that you use in place of the Nemesis deck. You don't mix them together. You can see they're easy to tell apart and their own terrible events for terrible things to happen to you at any time. Don't worry, I'm going to tell you what they do in a moment. Comes with its own Panic deck as well. So I'll tell you what Panic is. And the Void Seeders have their own attacks that replace the Intruder attack deck from the base game. And you also have your helper your player helper card that you'll use in place of the one in the base game as bag development um, and a few other things run just a little bit different there are no new characters you'll see there are some new exploration tokens there are three of them and they are little void seeder nests that you end up mixing into the game one two we'll find out where the third one is someday i'm sure you also use the void seeder not these here but the Void Seeder tokens that go in the intruder bag, you end up putting these in there instead of the ones that come with the base game of Nemesis. So you use these instead 
and then you have these little insanity markers that go on your character's player board. I believe that's all the tokens that get used. So, what on earth are the Void Seeders? What do they do? Well, they're pretty cool because the majority of them are not real. This game plays with the idea of insanity. So you have a card, your insanity track, that you would actually put next to your player board. We'll pretend my player board is there. You use a status marker to track your insanity. I don't have one out, so we'll say this is it. So let's say I start the game at one insanity. Well, events happen that make your character start to go more and more insane. The more insane they get, the worse things are. If you go up and up and up, and you can actually die from insanity. So you're fighting through this whole game, trying to keep this insanity track down while everything else is, keeps bumping it back up. So with that said, what that means is this is the only, well, actually this and the layers. So this little token here is the layer. This is real. This is also, this is the queen, but it's called something else. And this is also real. So if this ever pops on the board, you can actually eliminate this if at all possible as it's real. You can also eliminate the nest because it's real. Everything else is in your mind because what the layers do and what this mind flayer type thing does is they make you hallucinate and believe and hear sounds and believe things that aren't true. So you're in a room with a character and you get a void seeder pops in. It's not really there, but your character, depending on their insanity level, really believes they are and you have to fight them as if they're real however with the new events and things that can happen here and this panic deck that you sometimes have to draw from tells you what happens to your character based on their insanity level so you might be having hallucinations which makes you run in fear or you discard all your ammo because you ran off or most of them uh, most of them i could handle there was only one that was um the artwork uh yeah yeah this one right here the artwork was a little a little too disturbing for me so that's the only one that's the only one so sometimes i just play without it um, i don't know that anyone else would be affected by that so final thoughts on void cedar this really made it for me i love it if you're going to get one of the expansions that introduces new alien between void cedars or if it's the chitrids or if it's the carnomorphs i like the void cedars they are the coolest made the game if I play the base game of Nemesis, I could play it every time with the Void Seeders, and I'm pretty happy. That being said, though, if you're looking at $70 or more, um, it's probably, if you've already played the base game and you're in love with it, cool. I don't believe that you can use this with Untold Stories 1. As with a lot of games, the more you start combining expansions, the more chance that you break the game. I have not tried to play Untold Stories with the void seeders it, it would probably be a lot of fun and actually i might try that out sometime but i don't think you're supposed to i haven't read anything about that it probably totally breaks the game just know that cool so let's take a look at aftermath aftermath is an expansion for the base game that adds an epilogue mode after you've played a full regular game and it also adds a research mode if you would like to play with the aftermath character and tokens during the regular nemesis play so you have to have Nemesis, the base game, in order to play this. From what I know, this is not available in retail. I believe this was a Kickstarter exclusive. Please correct me if I'm wrong on that. So the only way to get this would be secondhand. It would be great if that uh, changed at some point. So let's look at what Nemesis is. What it is with the epilogue mode is you have this new board, this shuttle, that arrives with a new cast of these five characters. Let's shift overhead. We've got these five uh I'm sorry, there's only four right there. Where's my other guy go? There he is. I knew there was another. There we go. We got all these fun characters. And what it is, is you play a normal game in Nemesis. Everything happens. As long as the ship doesn't blow up, so the ship still has to exist, then you go to the epilogue mode, which adds five rounds, as you can see right here. You can use your little... Well, it doesn't come with status markers. You use those from the base game. And this docks onto the ship. These guys come on after the event, so you don't even have to win when you play the base game, your characters can survive or not survive. Ship just has to be intact. Then you start, they come on, they have five rounds to get onto the ship, which they do through technical corridors. So they leave their shuttle, get onto the ship, search around, try to survive. There are these new cards called alerts. And in this five round epilogue mode, two alerts will be revealed and you must resolve each alert in time. You only have two rounds to resolve each alert and to have explored nearly every single room if you're playing solo co-op mode. And really this doesn't lend great to true solo with only one character, one hand. It really does better with controlling more than one hand, so you can still play solo. 
um, and cooperatively, but just, just kind of good to know that as a lot of the character abilities really rely on some kind of interactivity with each other. You can still do it with only one character, but I noticed that doesn't seem to be how it's intended to be played. All right. Anyway, that's epilogue mode. You play with any, you can play the epilogue mode with characters from the base game as well. The rule is whatever characters you use to play the base game, you cannot use them in the epilogue mode because story-wise that doesn't make sense, right? Your ship arrives with new people exploring something that just happened on the ship. Your characters also for the epilogue mode have personal requirements. So you have one personal requirement per character that you're controlling if you're playing solo. So one for if you're controlling one player board, two if you're controlling two and so on. Same with cooperative, okay? So those are new cards. The personal requirements would replace objectives when you play the epilogue mode. The alerts are added only in the epilogue mode. The event deck replaces the base game event deck of the base game. So when you get to epilogue mode, you use this. And these two serious wound cards, which are melted, a new type of wound, are mixed in with the existing serious wounds. The lucrative offer, there's only one. It's the same every epilogue mode. And what it is, is any character can choose to take the lucrative offer in place of fulfilling their personal requirement at any time. Whoever takes it first, they're the only one that can get it. So that's made more for uh, cooperative type play, maybe semi-co-op. I don't have any experience with semi-co-op on Aftermath, so I don't want to speak to that. But yeah, lucrative offer you can do with one or... In fact, the lucrative offer is the only objective that can truly be completed solo. It's the only card that has a one player or more all of the personal requirements require either two players or more. So that's another reason why, yes, you can play this one-handed solo. This is the only requirement that can be met, the lucrative offer. Everything else, you're going to have to control more than one player board. It's different than the base game, which has some one-player uh, objectives that you can complete. All right. You've also got, we'll get to the characters after, you've got a new little cheat sheet card here. Not going to go into that. It tells you about alerts and the lucrative offer and such and such and the intruder bag development. I didn't notice any great changes, so let me know if there were changes. The action deck, the, all this is is 10 new cards per character, right? So you're 10 cards per character, and let's go ahead and go over those characters. So we have the convicts a little more complicated. Let's start with the simpler. Okay, these characters are, are wild. They do wild stuff. They are great fun. If you're a fan of the game, it's, it's super awesome. I could see, um, as with a lot of expansions, the more combining, mixing, and matching you do with other expansions, uh, they may break the game, and the instruction manual even acknowledges that. These are made for the epilogue mode or the research mode, but you can play with them on lockdown, on Nemesis, whatever you want. Just know that crazy things may or may not happen. All right, we got the CEO and his robot that helps him out. So some pretty cool abilities. He would replace the captain, so he's the blue. And then we've got the android, and the android is, please tell me, green. I'm pretty sure the android is green, which would replace the pilot. And she's cool because she's not human, so she actually cannot get infected with the larva, and she has less turns because of that. So she's totally, totally wild. Really cool. And then we've got my favorite, the psychologist, who would replace the scientist, which is the white uh, character. So you just put the little colored rings on these if you like. Anyway, she has some pretty cool abilities, the psychologist, in helping. She almost seems to have, I mean, she's definitely a support role. Um, if I remember right, even some healing type abilities. I don't remember. Anyway, pretty cool. Support scientific role. Then we have the bounty hunter. And this is two characters. So this is kind of like a hunter pet class in uh, computer RPGs. So you've got your bounty hunter here and his trusty puppy right here. And they actually do move separately as two separate characters, though you are controlling just one player board. So this really helps with scouting. He is purple. He replaces the scout. You can go and get items with your dog here and bring them back to you. Pretty sweet. And then you got your convict. This one's complex for solo play. Your conflict is red, replaces the soldier. So the only character that they didn't replace was the mechanic, which was orange. Um, but they did add mechanic as a separate, I'm sorry, uh, medic as a separate what do you call that? Expansion. And we'll cover her in a moment, but you have to buy that separate. All right, so Convict Red, the reason this is complex for Solo is he comes handcuffed or shackled, and the handcuffs key belongs to the Bounty Hunter if he's in play. It makes sense thematically. If the Bounty Hunter's not in play, then whatever other character's in play gets the cuffs key. And in a cooperative type game, again, I'm not speaking to semi-co-op because I haven't played it, in a cooperative type game, you'd be negotiating with whatever other character to try to get them to give you the cuffs key. It's pretty cool. It's fun. Um, and you have limited some limits to your abilities while your character is cuffed. However, if you're playing solo, it's almost just a formality. Like your first turn is probably going to be having your bounty hunter or whatever character 
trade the cuffs key to you and then he's going to use a turn to unlock it unless thematically you want to make a story now in lockdown this could no it wouldn't be different in lockdown because they still start in the same exact space so yeah for solo that's i'm not sure how that really works but it's a cool mechanic for cooperative play anyway i did it anyway just to try it okay those are your characters they come with their own character boards nothing new about them just the new illustrations everything else is exactly the same you got your character boards and you got your character starting items blah 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 i'm not going to go through all of them two to three per character i think it's three and the convict of course has the cuffs key which is extra so they all have their starting items and then you have this new thing called the traits and they include traits for the new characters the well yeah we won't rename them all the new characters sub -dub 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 -dub, and they include traits for the nemesis base game characters Traits are special abilities that can be used along with your 10 action cards. Several of them really only work if you are controlling more than one character, if you're playing solo or if you're playing with a group. Though some of them can use their abilities all by themselves. You do not have to play with the traits. You can add them or take them away. They do some wild stuff. It's very cool. But again, the more mixing and matching you do, you may break the game. So use these with the epilogue mode, research mode. You're fine on anything else. It could be pretty sweet. You could do some wild stuff. Who knows? All right. You also have these things that are guns that fire automatically. I know what they're called. Why don't I know what they're called? I don't know. They're motion sensing automated guns. Please tell me what they're called in the comments. Anyway, turrets. There we go. Turrets are a new addition to this that can be used. And they are activated in either the alarm room. Nope, the turret room. So this game comes with one, two, three, four new rooms that get shuffled into the rooms of the base game and maybe landed in your new shuttle. Pretty cool. You get to use those. I'm not going to go through what each one does. Obviously, there's the turret room. The alarm room lets you make, I guess I am going to go through it. Alarm room lets you make noise wherever you like. Crafting room lets you craft special items. There are new items that come with Aftermath. And I shuffled them into, nope, here they are. Nope, they're not there. I must have shuffled them into the base game. Um, but anyway, you can only craft those new items. I think there's only two or three of them in this crafting room. And then you have the server room, lets you allow, uh, allows you to use computers elsewhere on the ship. So some pretty, again, some pretty wild things can happen. Won't go through all the tokens. There are some tokens for the turrets, but the biggest thing is that there are new exploration tokens. So you play the base game with the normal exploration tokens, like this question mark. How did that get? Nope, that isn't here. What's up with that? Oh, that's a turret. That's why. The question mark ones are exploration tokens for turrets. The rest are these, um, or question marks. The exclamation marks are the new exploration tokens that get randomly placed on all the rooms of the Nemesis. So again, you go from your shuttle onto Nemesis and explore it with these new characters, new exploration tokens. They do new things. The rule book takes you through it. Instead of just closing one door like this one here, you close all the doors and so on and so on. There are all kinds of new wild things. Some of them are not so bad, like finding a carcass. Some of them are quite bad. It just depends how you play. Covered all that. You got your cool new first player token instead of the cardboard. You've got a really cute, adorable little space kitty. I love my space kitty. It's the best thing. And then you've got this hourglass, which adds a new feature. I don't imagine this would be useful in solo play other than only allowing yourself this much time to complete a move, maybe. But um, in the instructions, if you choose to play cooperatively or semi-co-op, I guess, you can flip this over. And if a player is still taking their turn, if I, if I understood it right, if a player is still taking their turn, then once it flips over, that person can grab this and create noise somewhere else in the ship or something like that. It adds a level of tension and betrayal, maybe, that you would want to be with the right game group for that. I don't imagine ever using it, but I'm not opposed. I'd give it a shot. All right. Covered all that, so then briefly, then what is research mode? Well, if you don't want to play a full base game and then do the epilogue mode of five additional rounds, you can, instead of playing the base game as normal, play the research mode, which allows you to add the shuttle and the exploration tokens, the new rooms, use these characters in the base game as part of a research mode instead with the event deck from this, and it also uses the alerts, so it just kind of skips that first initial playthrough of Nemesis unless you get unless you get straight to using the aftermath stuff and you don't do the epilogue mode after using this five round track. You don't do that, you use the base game's 15 round track. I think I've talked long enough on that, so let's go straight to the medic. I almost forgot to insert my final thoughts about aftermath now that I boxed it up. And with aftermath, my thoughts on this are this is for fans, okay? So one, you have to own the base game to begin with, and then you have to get this and you can only get it second hand. And I don't know if it's $40, $60, 
I don't remember because I got it part of a big pack, but it's somewhere in that range that I remember. So that's additional money you're putting on top of Nemesis. And when I say over 100, it could be 120. Um, you, you know, it depends where you get it from. All right. Anyway, I love it. It reminds me of Rise of Fenris for Scythe, where it's like a love letter to fans that kind of gives you a toy box to do crazy stuff with. Um, but it also adds a lot of story. And I love the Aftermath characters. I love them. They are pro probably my favorite, but they are also the most likely to break the game if you can break the game and i'm pretty sure you can so that's my thoughts on nemesis love it if you're a fan if you're not a fan please don't because it will confuse you and stress you out and you'll wonder what on earth is going on let's check out the medic medic is awesome i love the medic because it adds a healing class to the game so you've got your captain who's like your tank if you play computer style rpgs i don't so much anymore but i used to and then you've got your soldier that's like your heavy dps and then you've got your support characters like your scientist and the mechanic and then you've got your pilot who is just very good uh very agile able to move around and then your scout that's kind of like your rogue uh, i guess the pilot would be not similar to a hunter type but yeah they can just they can get around um and then you've got your your rogue with the scout and then of course your aftermath characters that mirror that but there's no healer well now we have a healer in the medic she's this cool pink color comes with a pink ring that i just have in another box it's probably in the Nemesis Lockdown Stretch Goals, that's where I keep her. All right, so she doesn't come with her own box, um, but she does come with her own packaging. However, the Medic, if I'm correct, is also a Kickstarter exclusive. Please correct me if I'm wrong on that. So she would only be available secondhand that I know of. I sure hope it changes because I just think she's great, super powered. So she comes with a trait card, just like all the Aftermath characters. So she's kind of like an extra Aftermath character, the sixth one. And since she's pink, she doesn't really match any other role in Nemesis or in Lockdown. All right, anyway, she heals. I won't go through everything. In order to use her trait, you have to play, you have to control more than one hand. You don't have to use her trait. You can just put it to the side and not use it. This is just her roll card, same as the base game. And she's got her items. She actually only has three, but one of these comes with Lockdown since Lockdown changes some things. So we'll take one of these out. I don't remember which one, but whatever. So she starts out with the needle gun, which is awesome. It lets you expend one bullet to force an intruder to retreat. So you don't do damage, but you're guaranteed an escape because the intruder retreats. It's incredibly powerful, super cool, and thematic as well. Then you have the surgery kit, which has some serious healing powers. If you have anyone that has a larva or infected cards, man, this just cleans them right out. Super awesome. And the combat drugs. Uh, lets you If you're running low on cards, it lets you draw until you have five cards, so you can really extend your turn. For solo, that doesn't always matter as much, but it can if intruders are about to come at you and take it out. And my, yeah, my mic's still running. Got to check every now and then. And then she comes with her 10 action cards. We won't go through every one in detail, but she's got ER, where she can spend ammo from the needle gun to help a character out um, or help herself out by drawing cards or doing something nasty as well. What is it? She can make a character get a contamination card in their discard pile, yeah. So that can be used for good or e ill. Uh, for solo and co-op, doesn't matter. Field dressing, heal all light wounds, or dress one serious wound. Uh, pretty awesome, only cost one. The ER is free. Computer skills for free. Pharmacist for free. Dress a, heal one dressed wound, or dress one serious wound. Awesome, and this isn't all just for yourself. It can be for a character in the same room as you. Repairs cost one. Search for zero, interruption, all the basic cards. Search, demolition for zero, and rest for zero. Those are the same cards that every single character has. That is the Medic. My thoughts on the Medic. I love her. She's one of my first go-to characters, if not my first go-to character to play as anytime. Even solo. Even solo, she has some incredible survivability. Love her. If you're a fan and you can find it, go for it. All right, let's move to Lockdown. Nemesis Lockdown. Let's just overview what's new instead of recapping what's the same so you can see if you own Nemesis, should you get Lockdown? Or if you don't own either, which should you get? Lockdown or Nemesis? Or do you need both? All right. It all depends whether you're a super fan. I'm going to assume you're not. If you're a super fan, you already got it. All right. Got your instruction booklet, and much of it is the same as the base game. It builds on the same rules as Nemesis. And when you go through the instruction booklet, they even have some... What, what do they do to let you know? Yeah, they like outline in red or they put a line of red. If you know the base game, they're like, you don't have to read this. 
but if you haven't played in a while, read it anyway. But there's a lot of new stuff that we are going to go over. And before I do that, since this game has two sides to the board, I want to make sure I mention with Nemesis, the base game I failed to mention, that has two sides to the board. A base side, and then if you flip it over, there's a slightly more challenging. It doesn't look any different when you just look at it, but the layout of the rooms is changed, and there are two technical corridors in Nemesis, the base game, that make it more challenging. So you have two sides of the board on that, too. You have two sides of the board here. The side I'm going to show you is actually the alternate harder side, as it's probably likely that you have seen the base side, and they do look similar, but I just want you to see the surface of Mars a little more. All right, so we've got that. We've got our rules summary sheet, which is actually quite nice. I would have liked this for the base game, and then your rooms sheet as we've always had for Nemesis, but it's rooms for Lockdown because these are different rooms. Last one was on a spaceship. This time we are on a facility on Mars. So we've gone from alien to aliens, basically. Although I have to say they really made this their own. I don't feel like this is as taken straight out of um, alien as I felt with Nemesis. I think they have found their own stride and they have made their own beast. So there we go. Goodbye instructions. I hope I don't slip on those when I try and slide out of here. So what's different? Well, new characters, new location, new story. So the story is now you have characters who have survived from the Nemesis as well as facility workers in this Mars complex. Those who have survived Nemesis, the Nemesis has arrived here in one way or another and crash landed or something like that and you run to this facility for shelter and they end up locking the survivors in this like isolation room and the facility workers of course start in an upper room somewhere else. Something happens, the facility shuts down, power starts going out and these creatures called Night Stalkers, I think I got that right, Night Stalkers come out and they start wreaking havoc and taking people's lives and it's very unfortunate and sad. And you're trying to survive which introduces a new mechanic of power that was not in Nemesis. You are on a leveled type of board where you have the first floor, second floor, third floor. So there's actually stairways in between and an elevator that goes up and down. Here's your elevator. And I'll try and push the board out so you can see. Don't fall off. Please don't fall. Thank you. And you got your elevator here and it goes up and down based on what you do with it and whether or not there's power. So there's different levels and then there is power on each floor represented by power tokens that are hidden right here. There we go power tokens like this, there's four of them, and you'll have a spot here, so right now it's blue, there's power in this section on this floor. And then if it's flipped this way, there is no power and you are in darkness. The Night Stalkers are more powerful in the dark than in the light, which introduces new dice. So in the base game, you only have a red dice when you attack. Well, when the power is on, you roll a blue dice, which gives you extra bonuses, more damage, all kinds of cool stuff, like you get one attack and you can discard a card to make it two attacks, that kind of thing. So there's incentive to keep that power on. Also with your event decks, I'll try to pull one out someday, somewhere. There we go, but that's not a darkness one. I need one that has a darkness effect. There we go. Some event cards have a darkness effect where if you are, if the power is on, you do not apply the darkness portion of the event. The power is off, you do. So you still got the same events as the base game or similar, but this whole other power darkness on off night stalkers thing just adds a cool element. Does it overcomplicate it? Not in my opinion, not at all. You have to consult the rule book the first few times, but you have to do that for the base game too. So that's just something you just got to get used to, right? Okay, it also introduces the rover, and the rover goes outside of the facility, so this is the surface of Mars out here, and you can take the rover between, on this alternate side of the board, between here and an escape room. If you set the auto-destruct, you can go in here and hide, or you can go over to an attached building here, or you can go over to an attached building there. That's what the rover's for. On the base side of the board, you can only take the rover between here and this shelter thingy and back, all right? All the rest of the buildings are connected. If you're on the surface of Mars, and that's only on this side of the board, which is why I wanted to show you, the other side you don't have to do this, then instead of rolling the noise die, as you do on any of these rooms, or the other side of the board, or the base game Nemesis, if you're on the surface, say your character is right there, give me a character, give me a character, come on, don't make it complicated, oh my goodness, there we go. Then you would roll the Mars surface die, and it would tell you, okay, place a noise marker in region one, um, but it also does, oh there it is, there's a symbol right there, Hopefully you can see it. And that means that you draw an on a Mars surf surface event card, which is gonna be hidden somewhere in here with the computer action card. There we go, Mars surface events. All right, Mars surface events are a whole new series of events. Where are you at? Those are objectives, I'm not interested in you. I'm not interested in you. 
I'm interested in you. Mars surface, there you go. You'd flip one over and carry out what terrible or possibly not so terrible thing happens. If you are, if you have an item called an Enviro suit, then you're going to fare much better. If you are out here unprotected and you just have something to help you breathe, then you have a second part, or is it the first part? Yeah, it's the first part's the really bad one. You apply the first part if you're not protected. Second part applies if you are protected in an Enviro suit or in one of the buildings on the surface here. And you can tell because there's a little icon that tells you everything here counts as having an Enviro suit on. These are considered outside buildings. This is a building, this is a building, this is also its own building, but you don't have to worry about, these aren't, this isn't on the surface, this is like an cliffside going below the ground, it's subterranean, these are on the surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what these Mars surface cards are, and this is the only place that they are used. I will say one little complaint I have is the rules about the intruders and what they do on the surface are not crystal clear to me, and it doesn't mean they're not written crystal clear. Um, it says basically that they behave the same as in technical corridors, except in this, you know, except for one or two little things. But um, they don't behave the same as moving from room to room, like they don't just move around on the surface. They will only move to you if a danger is rolled, and that means that they move to you. And then from there, you treat it as a technical corridor. So I assume when they're told to move again, that they just move off the board and go back in the bag. I wasn't 100% clear on it. Please let me know if you understand the rules more than I do. I feel like something was missing that I, I should have been able to comprehend a little better what to do with intruders on the surface. That's my only thing that I have not been able to figure out, and I've just poured over and over and over um, about that. All right. So we got those. What else is new? We've gone over the Mars surface deck. Goodbye. Uh, you've got new objectives. Okay. Objective, objective, objective. And you can see that they are, it, there aren't like, it doesn't say solo or cooperative or anything like that. You just have personal objectives and corporate objectives. And I don't think, let me double check. I don't think they had separate. Yeah, they do. They do. Oh, my gravy. Knock me silly. All right. So use those for semi-co-op, whatever. Solo co-op objectives, but look how many there are. They have a whole lot more than the original base game. And you will have one to complete per character. If you're playing solo, I believe you draw two and then pick one later. And then cooperative, everybody just gets one. Um, so this game is very, it, I think this game is more solo friendly as far as controlling only one character uh, than Nemesis is, though it's possible to do both. But controlling more than one hand is totally viable. But yeah. New, new objectives that can only be used in lockdown and all that. So next goes the computer, computer actions. This is new to lockdown. This is not in Nemesis, the base game. And there's a place to put them on the board. There's a special spot for computer actions on the other side. Maybe we don't get that spot on this side. Yes, we do right there. Okay, so computer actions go over here, but just in case that's off camera, I'm gonna put it here. What that is, is any time that you are in a room with a computer in lockdown, you can choose to spend some cards to take a computer action. You'll know what it is, because one will always be flipped face up, and you can pick any one of the three actions, unless you have a character with a special ability that lets you do more. And they can help you with things like keeping power on, all kinds of good stuff. They're good things. However, the downside is one of these is, says lockdown. There it is. So after you finish this one, let's say you finish this, boom, 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 you take computer action C, you put it at the bottom, and then, or you just put it in a discard pile. Then you flip over the next one. If it's locked down, that's bad. You gotta follow the directions of what happened, put it at the bottom, and start again. So there's only one, two, three, four, five, six of these cards. There's a one in six chance that you're gonna draw a lockdown, and of course an increased chance the more you use the computer actions, and lockdown isn't fantastic. So a little bit of risk involved, they add, they keep that stress going, which I appreciate. I really like the stress. All right, we've gone over the dice, and let's go over the rest of the cards real quick. We've gone over the elevator. To move the elevator, you have to have power. The elevator has its own power token, right? So it would be this one if it's blue, and the game tells you when it will be turned on or off, and you also tell the game when it will be turned on and off. So if it's off, the elevator can't be used unless you have an ability otherwise, and if power's on, you can use it. And the elevator is so much safer than using these stairwells here. Stairwells are very dangerous. Use them at your own risk and do not come to me when things go poorly because they will all right rest of the cards you've got item decks so i guess in case i didn't say it i didn't say it you do not need nemesis the base game for lockdown lockdown is a standalone game it's called an expansion it's not an expansion it's a standalone game it's a sequel it is a sequel it does continue the story i appreciate that um so 
Item deck, same thing. Weapons, healings are green, and the tools and such are yellow. And you have some new things that you can craft as well. You got all your crafting items. And then you've got your character cards. For each character, they have two. Instead of the three, they have two starting items. And it's a little different because um, in Nemesis, the base game, all of your characters start in the same spot. In Lockdown, it's different. If you're playing as a Nemesis survivor, and there are two of those that come with the base game, one, two, I'm pretty sure it's only two, the Lab Rat and the Survivor. If there's a third one, I'm going to have to check. But they start in an isolation room, like way down here, and then the facility workers, they start in a spot on the complete opposite side of the board. So totally new dynamic. And they don't actually all get to start with their items activated. So new challenge there. But anyway, two for each character, blah, blah, blah. And they have cards so that you can play with the base nemesis game characters, they have lockdown cards so you, you can play with them if you would like. They also have cards for playing with the um, uh, the medic so that they can come into this. And I believe, do they have the lockdown characters? I think the lockdown characters you just bring over as they are. All right, and then you can craft items and such. So that's what all your small cards are. Boom and boom and boom. As far as events, we're not going to go through all of those because... It's just a new event deck specifically for this and the Night Stalkers, the new alien creatures. You've got your character draft cards and then, of course, 10 cards for every character. So we've got the survivors going to have their 10 card hand and so on. They also include cards for the pilot and the just the just a couple characters. The pilot, if you want to play from the base game, has to use these 10 cards because the pilot cards specifically reference the Nemesis ship. So they needed to redo it for lockdown. And also, I think the captain is in here as well. I'd have to double check. I think those are the only two, but I'll have to double check thoroughly on that. But I'm pretty sure he has his own deck. Who knows? Maybe not. But the pilot sure does. Anyway, so you can use any and all of the characters, aftermath-based games, so on and so on. Serious wound cards, not going to look through them, specific to this game. You've got your basic event cards for the base game. You've got Night Stalker attack cards instead of Intruder attack cards. Everything you need right here, and of course your Contamination deck. All of that is the same. There are other cards that are used um, for, I'm not going to pull them out, but if you want to play with the Void Seeders or the Carnomorphs, then this also comes with cards that you can use, event cards that you can use with Lockdown if you want to use those aliens instead of the Night Stalkers. Alright, so you can mix and match everything you want, all right, and see what happens. You have your character draft cards can go away. You have your tiles. There are more rooms in Lockdown than in Nemesis, so more tiles to choose from. I'm not going to go through all of them. They've got some cool, cool things, completely new abilities. This is not a replicant of, if that's a word, is that a word, um, a direct copy of Nemesis, the base game, at all. Not in any way, but it does follow the same base rules, so if you know how to play Nemesis, you will know how to play this. You'll be able to figure it out. Get those nice and organized. That's satisfying. Good. All right. So let's go to, we've got our nemesis bag here. Let's go straight to our characters. We've got our little rings to hold the characters. We've got our janitor. He would be orange. He would replace the mechanic of the base game. He's got some amazing mobility, and he's he's just your like support character that can craft and do some amazing stuff. We've got our sentry, who should have a blue base. I don't know where the blue base is, but that's okay. Uh, the sentry replaces the, he's gone. He replaces the, can I get it with my foot? No. Of course not, and I'm knocking something over. All right, he replaces the captain, and, but not with the exact same abilities. They all have unique abilities. There it is. There's the blue. They all have unique abilities specific to lockdown, uh, so definitely a reason to play with them instead. Then you've got a nemesis survivor. Those two are facility workers. Nemesis survivor is the red, I believe, or the purple. Labrat is purple. Nemesis survivor is red. She would replace the soldier. So she is, of course, your damage per second, your DPS, your attack your fighting hero kind of thing. I hope I got that with the right color. Orange is done, blue is done. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, then we've got our, who are you? We've got our lab, oh, that was, that's the lab rat. I got the figurine wrong. Okay, we'll cover the lab rat. That one there is the survivor. So she's a soldier. Then we've got the lab rat. She does replace the scout, but she's got these like super powered abilities and she's protected uh, by one of her cards you can use to protect you from darkness. She is a nemesis survivor. And when they say nemesis survivor, that does not mean that these are characters from the base game that now just look completely different. It's just assumed that there were other people on the ship somewhere and they survived. 
So Labrat is the one I played the most. She can really navigate this board, like just keep move, 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 move. But the super powered abilities are a pretty cool introduction. Uh, she kind of reminds me of Eleven from Stranger Things. Then we've got the Xenobiologist, who would be like the psychologist or the scientist. Xenobiologist is powerful. Um, her research abilities, if you focus on her getting higher research, she actually increases the damage she does to aliens based on her knowledge, which knowledge is a new thing I'll show you here. So she's pretty wild. Really enjoyed her. And then we have the hacker. The hacker, if you have the hacker and the xenobiologist together, this is a dynamic duo. The hacker can really help you with power because you know, they hack into systems and do their thing. So the hacker is green, that would replace the pilot. I would argue much more powerful than the pilot. Those are your characters. These are your character boards. I don't think they are different in any way from the base game. Just new artwork, boom. Xenobiologist, sentry, the janitor, the survivor, the lab rat, and then of course we have our laboratory board. So the base game has an intruder board with the nest and all that. You don't have that in this. You have a laboratory board where each character has a knowledge token matching their color. So if I'm playing as the hacker, start with this green marker. And as I do certain things that, I'm not going to go into all of it, um, that let you gain knowledge, you gain more basically power. So you can discover and use the weaknesses of the, white, of the Night Stalkers that you find, but also some of your cards allow you to do special things based on your knowledge. So like it will be, if you're at knowledge level five, do this. If you're less, you have to do that. So it's, there's a lot of advantage to increasing your knowledge. And there's another thing called activating your knowledge where you flip it over. That's its own thing. Pretty cool though. I really enjoyed that. Go back where you came from. I don't know where you came from. Maybe we'll never know. There you go. All right. So that is our laboratory board. If you'd like to play with the intruders, you, there's an intruder board. There's the Chytrids have a, that's an expansion we'll go into in a minute. They also have their own board and they include, maybe it's a part of the stretch goals though. I think the stretch goals are what include the boards for the, you know, carnivores and the other things, the void, void walkers, void seeders, void seeders. All right, I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, this is what comes with the base game. I'm pretty sure that's all that comes with the base game. And then your cheat sheets, which are actually better than the base game because they cover everything. They tell you what to do for your rounds. They tell you what to do for contingencies, which we'll cover in a minute. Your crafted items, cheat sheet and also what to do during a Night Stalker encounter and an intruder bag development. So you can basically have four, one, two, three. You can have three cheat sheets in front of you and not really have to consult the rule book. Um, just these in the room sheets really should keep you going once you learn the game. All right, cards, go back where you came from. What else we got over here? Let's bring this over. You've got your card trays, won't go into that. That's the same as ever. Nothing new down here. First player token is a raccoon. Super cool, super cute. Yep, there's stuff. And I believe the one I got came with this uh, first player token mini. I don't know when this goes to retail, if that will be there. I'm assuming lockdown will go to retail. It would be ridiculous if it didn't. It is not available in retail yet. Just Kickstarter, which is over, so just secondhand. But I'm totally sure that this is hitting retail. Um, so maybe by the time you watch this, it'll be there. Who knows? Then you have your Night Stalker figurines, which are just... They're actually my favorite figurines because of the little bat wings. You can see these ones, these little aliens fly. This one's kind of creepy. He's a little creeper around, but I really like the winged look and the idea of being stronger in darkness. And from the pictures in the rule book illustrations, things like that, these guys are huge. They are supposed to look huge because they are huge. So you've got those, those are your adults. And then you've got your, these would be breeders hanging off of uh, big old gigantic things with their cool looking wings. So they're basically gigantic bats, which I just, I love. And then the queen Night Stalker is kind of serpentine, but she looks really cool. Yeah, so I, I will take these over the intruders any day of the week. And we're not gonna try to get those back because that's crazy pants. Maybe I will. I can't resist, I can't take it. Go, where you, go home. All right, I'll worry about it later. You've got your own intruder bag. Don't need to go over all the pieces here. These doors, I believe, came with the stretch goals, so ignore that. They're kind of deluxified. It's cool when they get broken. You split it apart and you've got a broken door. I love it. But I don't believe they come when you buy Lockdown. Lockdown comes with the cardboard standee doors, just like the base game, except these are bigger. You also have your power token, um, which is what you use to track what round you're on. The board has it at the top here. Let me slide this crazy pantsness over, get you off of there. So in the base game you had, Nemesis base game, you had 15 rounds, same thing with Lockdown, but now you get to see whether the power is on or off. 
and there's just there's too much to cover there but yeah that's what that's for and instead of tracking the damage on intruders with damage cubes like this like that which was cool looking but difficult instead we have damage counters now so you can go they have one damage two three four and you just move it around the board with the intruder so that's a nice addition they listen to the fans there there's a new way to escape you can escape running to the isolation room locking yourself in escape by getting to this escape compound room here or by launching yourself in the cargo service system pods which is risky they may or may not launch there's several pods that's what these tokens are for so there's a whole system for that in order to escape but i'm not going to go into it but that's what these tokens are for and you don't know whether you su successfully escape it until they get flipped over the game tells you when to flip them so like this if you were in escape pod b then when this is flipped over you would have escaped but if you were in escape pod c flip this over it didn't work and you suffer injury so yeah a cool new risky way to escape and we're going to get to contingencies contingencies as well i believe those tokens are down here maybe where do, yeah those, that's where they are all right so we'll finish this tray nothing new to show you there intruder tokens everything's the same as the base game you have more fire to go around more malfunction markers but it's a bigger board so that's life all right all that's the same so that only leaves the contingencies so this is a really cool tension point in the game i think one of the coolest additions i haven't heard anyone say that it was overcomplicated. believe it or not and I think that says a lot to the design of Lockdown, which I guess is taking me to, if you only buy one, which should you get? Maybe I've already made it clear, get Lockdown. Um, if you own Nemesis, should you get Lockdown? Absolutely. It is a different game. It's a different experience. And it's worth it. It's over $100, of course. If you can only get one, I'd recommend Lockdown. If you have Lockdown, should you get the base game Nemesis? If you're a fan, absolutely. It doesn't add anything new, but the ship environment is completely different. And it is a different feel. It's a little less frantic. This is a little more fast-paced, wild, like what is going on? There's so much going wrong everywhere. Nemesis is a little more controlled, a little more plotting compared to this. So if you're a fan, go back and get Nemesis. If you only get one, lockdown. No question. No question about it. Okay. So these contingency tokens, there's six of them. And what the story is, is there is a rescue team coming from a corporation. Well, a rescue team, as much as this game has rescue teams. And they are going to do something when they arrive. So there is one of these, they're all flipped over. One of them is put here. When the game ends, you flip it over and find out what they're going to do. You need to be, based on what they're going to do, you may need to be hiding here or in the isolation room or in a CSS pod. You don't know because if you're in the wrong place, they may not save you or they may exterminate you or they may require that you send a signal, but you don't know. So part of the game is uncovering a pool of hidden tokens here to try to narrow down what this one is. All right, so you've got a deduction aspect that I absolutely love. It creates some serious tension as you're going through this game as you can't just escape any which way you want. You might do it and then find out they are gonna foil your plans. I don't wanna keep going on lockdown. I've already given you my final thoughts let's move to the lockdown stretch goals go all right let's look at the stretch goals for lockdown these were stretch goals for kickstarter i do not know if these will be hitting retail or not it did not say kickstarter exclusive so maybe there's a chance of it i would love to see that please let me know if you find out before i do stretch goals primarily are a new alien expansion much like there was void cedars and carnivores well now there are the chitrids which are is fungus so it's a totally new take it's pretty cool really changes up the game i'm showing the base side of the lockdown board so you can see the other side if you'd like you have to own lockdown in order to use the chitrids expansion i will have to check if you can use the chitrids in i believe you can use them in I don't know, actually. I don't know if you can use them in the Nemesis base game. That's a good question. I have not tried it, and I don't see it in here, so I'm not sure. But what the expand, what the stretch goals do is they give you rules for using the Void Seeders in Lockdown, as well as the Carnomorphs. If you just get Lockdown that I'm aware of, it doesn't come with those extra rules. And it also comes with the laboratory board for your Carnomorphs, and your. it doesn't come with the medic board. The medic board is just in there that's where i store it that comes with the medic and there the carnivore board it also comes with that but i've got the chitrids here yeah that's the carnivore board the void cedars board i think i have it in another box i've mixed these boxes all up to store it properly but anyway we're not going to go into using the expansions with this just know that you can so the chitrids are these mossy creatures with, come with all kinds of cool stuff these green mycelium things that end up spreading around basically it's a moss it's like a mold that's spreading around the ship 
and you've got a queen that goes on this board here, off to the side, of course, with the these stink horns, which would basically be adult intruders, but these stink horns go all the way around like this. It's a pretty cool mechanic. You've got a nice setup with all these stink horns. Boop, boop, boop. So this would be off to the side of the board, all these stink horns. There we go. And whenever you resolve an encounter and have to put an adult intruder on the board, you take the highest numbered one, which is a seven, I believe, yep. So you take the highest numbered one and place it wherever the encounter occurred. So if your character's there, that's where the stink horn, it kind of represents this mold spreading through the ducks and popping up anywhere. It's like a tentacle, an arm. It'd pop up there and it has the number seven. And what that means is if you ever attack the queen, you have to flip over the intruder attack cards as you normally would, and you have to do that much extra damage in order to defeat them. So if you flipped over three, it would be three plus seven. I'd have to do 10 damage um, in order to beat the queen. And the more stink horns are out, the easier it is to beat the queen, right? So there's some, you know, some benefit to destroying the stink horns. And the cool thing is when you destroy a stink horn, you remove it from the game, including the token. The token goes out of the intruder uh, bag, which is different from the other types of intruders that you deal with or aliens that you deal with. However, they can get returned to the game as well. If you draw a silent token, it's not good. Uh, as in the other games, you kind of want that. Not so much with this. So that's the queen and the adults. Then instead of breeders, they have these death caps, which are these, these giant mushroom things. And they're just bad. They're just bad. Just don't, don't get them out. But the other things you have, you don't really have larva. Instead, you have, they're not called spores, but we're going to call them cubes because these are, I'm pretty sure these are the spores. You have all kinds of these, and they get spread around like crazy. You know, they're just spreading. The more you move, the more these things spread. You can remove them by attacking them, and sometimes it's to your benefit. But basically how it works is these turn into these square fungal cubes. These square fungal cubes grow. So like this is level one, and then you turn it, it's level two, and then you turn it, and it's level three. If you have to upgrade it after that and events in the game tell you when to do that, then it upgrades to this marker here, which is permanent. It can never be removed. If enough of these get placed or if all of them get placed, it's game over. The place has been infested. You're not going to make it out. So it's, you're basically trying to keep the spread down while moving around. And this thing follows you and just grows as you run around. So it's quite a different challenge. And I did enjoy it. It's not my favorite. Um, I like the Void Seeders more. The Night Stalkers are my favorite then probably the Void Seeders, um, and then I think the Chitrids. I could, I could probably live without the base intruders, and you already know how I feel about Carnomorphs. I'm not super into them. But um, the stretch goals also give you some deluxe fight components, like this door that is, it would normally be a cardboard door that seals off this escape here. Well, now you get this emergency door, and then uh, if you start the auto-destruct, then it gets opened and you move it. So there's that. And then instead of a cardboard rover, you get a cool little miniature here that rovers around and does rover things. And you also get any other deluxe side stuff? No, not really. So it, the, the chitrids come with their own intruder tokens and you put all of them in the bag, every one of them. So it's really easy. Uh, unlike the other games where you have to count out a certain amount of larva, a certain amount of adult. Nope, you just put in all of them right in the bag. Really appreciate that. I enjoyed that element of it. And of course, cards that allow you to play stuff. Cards that allow you to play the Chitrids event deck, and it's got its own artwork, so you know it's for Chitrids. And also, the Chitrids have their own attack deck that replace the Night Stalkers. And you've got new events for. Is this for the Chitrids? No, we already looked at the Chitrid events. I forget what these events are for. Are they for Night Stalkers? I don't remember. They're either for Night Stalkers, Void, 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 you know, I want to call them Void Walkers. What are they called? Void Seeders or Carnivores, and I don't remember which. Um, you've got your. Action cards, nothing new, nothing new. Uh, that just The action cards allow you to bring the Aftermath characters specifically to the Lockdown board. So that's part of the stretch goals, and I don't think there's really anything else. A couple objectives. Yeah, the rest, nothing special. Nothing special. Okay, so that is Chitrids. Let's go to Untold Stories number three. Right. Untold Stories 3, a graphic novel campaign mode for Nemesis Lockdown. This is part of the stretch goals. I don't know if it's coming to retail. I hope it does. There are a couple typos, nothing near as bad as Untold Stories 1. Um, and again, I don't know much about Untold Stories 2 as it's uh, semi-co-op only and not really a story, just individual scenarios that aren't canon. All right, if we can call this canon. 
This is the best of the untold stories. I'll just go straight out with that. I've played it all the way through, I have failed, and I have succeeded. I've made it to the end of the story with one of the decent endings. This is very choose your own adventurous kind of sort of, where it tells you how to set up the game. You've got a comic that tells you the story of your nemesis survivors crash landing, then meeting up with the facility workers, and then the power going out and everybody trying to figure out what's going on. And it's pretty amazing because you're not in, well, I don't want to give spoilers, but let's just you travel, okay? You are not in one location, and they utilize both sides of the board, which Untold Stories 1 does as well. I just think that they improved on uh, they improved on the whole system with Untold Stories 3. I really enjoyed it. You are traveling around from place to place, and you have, let me just tell you, you, you never know whether you're finishing a mission because the game tells you when you're done. So you may think, all right, I have to get from A to B, and then I'm done. You use everything to carefully get from A to B and then find out that just opened up a whole other thing and now you don't have enough time because you were being so careful. So sometimes you got to run around. It straight up tells you that you can play solo, but it will be a much bigger challenge. And this is true. I was able to play half of this truly solo, as in controlling one player board. And for two of the scenarios, at least, I controlled either two or three characters in order to beat it. But I made it. Look at the artwork. Don't know what else to say about it. There's a few special tokens, just like the untold stories. And the game tells you when to use them. If you like a story, if you like a campaign, this is, of all of the Untold Stories, this one is the gold. I still like Untold Stories 1 very much. Um, the, it's just the little errors in it kind of drive me nuts. There are a lot less in here. Love it. That is it. My final, final thought on all of this with all of these different things. What should you get? If you do not own any Nemesis and this type of game appeals to you, get locked down. Very simple. If you love Lockdown and you want more, then by all means get one of the expansions, uh, whether it's you're able to get the stretch goals or what's available at market, I would recommend the Void Seeders. Some people like Carnivores. I, it's not my thing. If you uh, get the Medic, if you can get your hands on the Medic, get the Medic. If you still want more, then go for the base game. The base game, I still will pull it out um, and enjoy it. It's not exactly the same as Lockdown at all, and I kind of welcome the spaceship pace that lockdown is lacking as you're now on the surface of mars that is it thank you so much please check out this next video it's a mashup of nemesis crash landing onto rococo that's right i love you all i'll see you next time